All right, so this video is going to show you how to compute the partial correlation coefficient to see if the relationship between x and y is actually due to a z variable, a third variable. So in this example, you see there's a strong positive relationship between shoe size and reading ability. And that doesn't make a whole lot of sense, right? It's really strong and positive. It's like, oh, maybe people with bigger feet have better reading ability, and people with smaller feet can't read as well. What's really driving, or what we think is driving this observed relationship between shoe size and reading ability is age, right? Those who are older tend to have bigger shoe size. Those who are older tend to have stronger reading ability, especially if the sample that you got this, um, these uh, results from includes children and adults. So this is a very obvious example of where a partial correlation could be something you'd want to calculate to see if the relationship between x and y is actually due to this z variable here. So the formula for a partial correlation requires knowing the relationship between x and y, the relationship between x and z, and the relationship between y and z. And for our purposes, when you're doing a partial correlation, I'm always going to give you those three values. So we know that the relationship between x and y which is between shoe size and reading ability is 0.80. The correlation between X and Z or the correlation between shoe size and age is 0.90. And then the correlation between reading ability and age or YZ is equal to 0.85. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the formula for the partial correlation. It looks complicated, but it really just requires you to plug in numbers. It's the interpretation of the partial correlation that students typically find most difficult. So, the formula looks like this. So, the relationship between x and y after controlling for z is equal to the correlation between x and y minus the correlation between x and z multiplied by the correlation between y and z divided by the square root of 1 minus r squared xz. So remember, r squared is a measure of effect size. So what this essentially tells you down here, if you take 1 minus the effect size, whereas r squared tells you the uh, proportion of differences in y that's accounted for by the relationship between x and y. Well, in this case, the, purport, the proportion of differences in z that's accounted for by the relationship between y and z. 1 minus that tells you the proportion that's not accounted for by that relationship. Just showing you why we're looking at that in the denominator there. All right, then 1 minus the effect size for the relationship between y and z. Okay. So let's plug in some values. So the relationship between x and y, the correlation between x and y is 0.80. Subtract, so rxz is 0.90 times ryz, 0.85. Okay, and then down here we have 1 minus. So r squared for xz, so if we take rxz, and we can just go ahead and plot this in here. So r squared for xz, and then we're also going to need r squared for yz. Just so we have those values available, so we can just plug them into our formula. So r for xz is equal to 0 0.90, and 0 0.90 times 0 0.90 gives you 0 0.81. So 0.81, and then the r for yz is 0.85, and 0.85 times 0.85 gives me 0 0.723. 0 0.723. All right, so I have 1 minus 0.81 here, and 1 minus 0.723 here. All right, 1 minus Rxz squared, that squared, which is 0.81, and 1 minus RYZ, this, this guy, squared, or 0.723. And don't forget your square root. 
All right, so let's solve for what's in the parentheses first, right? Order of operations is important here. So we're left with 0 0.80 minus 0 0.90 times 0.85 gives me 0.765 divided by the square root of 1 minus 0 0.81 gives me 0 0.19 and 1 minus 0.723 gives me 0.277. So the numerator isn't going to change yet because we need to so we need to multiply what's in that square root. So now minus 0.765. All right. So now we're left with so 0.19 times 0.277 gives me 0 0.053. Let's go ahead and solve for the numerator and for the square root there. So 0 0.80 minus 0 0.765 is 0 0.035. And then 0 0.053, the square root of that is 0 0.230. And we're left with the partial correlation coefficient of 0 0.152. That is the correlation between shoe size and reading ability after controlling for age. So what you do is you compare the relationship between shoe size and reading ability after controlling for age to the original correlation or the original relationship between shoe size and reading ability. And we can see that once you control for age, that relationship becomes much, much weaker. There seems to still be, you know, kind of like a, you know, weak to moderate relationship between shoe size and reading ability. But we know that the reason that we saw such a strong positive relationship between shoe size and reading ability is mostly due to the fact that both of these variables are related to age. So this is much smaller than this. So we know that the z variable inflated or strengthened that observed relationship between x and y. Both of these things are related to age. So that's why we see such a strong positive correlation here.